Welcome, listeners. Have you ever wondered what secrets lie hidden beneath layers of ice in places untouched by time? Today we journey into the heart of an icy cavern where glittering walls hold mysteries that defy explanation. What begins as a research expedition quickly takes a chilling turn, leading to discoveries that will leave you breathless. Stay close as we unravel the enigma of the frozen depths, step by step, twist by twist. Let's begin. When the research team stumbled upon a cavernous opening in the iceberg, excitement rippled through their ranks. The cave's icy walls glittered like diamonds, hinting at undiscovered wonders within. Equipped with flashlights and cameras, they ventured inside, curiosity and anticipation fueling their every step. The team hadn't spoken much on their way into the cave, except for the necessary signals to each other, but now they all collectively gasped as they saw what was in front of them. It was a huge lake in the middle of this icy cave. How was this even possible? Steve, the group leader, urged his team to keep their distance from the water, but one of his teammates, Richard, didn't seem to hear him. Richard slowly made his way closer to the lake until he was standing right beside it. Whoa, guys, you really have to see this. Come closer, he whispered to the rest. Before anyone even realized what he was doing, he stretched out his hand and lowered it into the water. Steve saw it and yelled, Rich, don't! But it was already too late. Richard screamed and his whole body started shaking. It looked like he was having some kind of attack. The others rushed to him to see if he was okay, but he was unconscious. Then they heard an ominous noise coming from deep inside the cave and they all turned completely pale. What had happened to Richard? What was going on with this lake? And what was the scary noise they heard? Everyone, stay back. Do not touch that water, Steve exclaimed as he got on his knees next to Richard. He tried everything to wake him up, but Richard was unresponsive. There was no time to lose. If they wanted to save him, they needed to act fast. Steve still wanted to explore the rest of the cave, but he decided that was not his priority right now, and he would return later. They all gathered around him and carefully lifted Richard, after which they made their way back to the cave entrance. Monica, go! We've got him! He urged another teammate. Hurry and make an emergency call so they can come and get him as soon as possible. Monica nodded, then sprinted off with her flashlight, ready to summon help. When they made it outside, they carefully laid Richard down on the ground and checked on him. He's alive, but he's not well, Steve said. Only moments later, they heard a loud chopping noise, and then they saw a helicopter. It landed right next to them, and immediately a few emergency personnel jumped out and ran to Richard. They carried him into the helicopter, and Monica went with him so he wouldn't be alone when he woke up. But the rest of the team decided to go back into the cave. They needed to figure out what had happened in there, and they couldn't deny that there was something strange about the cave. Just please be careful and stay away from that water. Don't touch it. Steve urged the others. The second time they made their way inside, it all went a bit faster as they already knew exactly where to go. However, they all froze in place when they heard that same terrifying sound coming from deep inside somewhere. Steve urged the team to stay calm as the ominous noise echoed through the cave. The team spotted an opening behind the lake where the noise seemed to originate. Over there, someone pointed. Steve squinted and nodded. That's where it's coming from. The sound grew louder, almost beckoning them. We need to see what's in there, Steve said, leading them forward. Steve insisted on crossing the lake to investigate, despite protests. Strapping on his gear, he prepared to go alone if necessary. The team couldn't let Steve go alone. We're in this together, Monica said, and Richard agreed. Torn between fear and loyalty, they donned their climbing gear. Steve led the way, his ice pick echoing against the frozen walls as they carefully traversed the icy expanse above the lake. They climbed carefully, every step needing precision. Despite the growing unease, they pressed on. Almost there, Steve encouraged, his voice steady. Monica focused on the icy wall and Richard forced himself to stay calm. After a tense climb, they finally made it across. We did it. Steve said with relief. 
The shadowy lake was behind them, but the unknown lay ahead. They ventured cautiously deeper into the cave. Stay sharp, Steve whispered, flashlight in hand. A faint light appeared at the end of the tunnel. Do you see that? Richard whispered. Steve nodded, signaling for caution. What could it be? Monica murmured, curiosity mingling with dread. Moving closer to the light, they remained unaware of what awaited them. The glow became brighter, casting eerie shadows on the walls. The cave walls seemed to close in, amplifying their anxiety. Stay together, Monica reminded them. Reaching its source, they found a lit candle flickering as if someone had just left. Someone's been here, Steve said quietly. He knelt, inspecting it. This is fresh. Monica glanced around, a chill running down her spine. We're not alone, she murmured. Multiple tunnels branched out from the main one. We should split up, Steve suggested. Monica hesitated. Are you sure? Richard agreed with Steve. We'll be fine. Reluctantly, they paired off. Steve and Nikki ventured down one tunnel, leaving the others behind. Stay close, Steve said, as the cold, damp air enveloped them. As they moved deeper, footsteps suddenly approached. Quick, over here, Steve whispered, pulling Nikki behind a rock. They crouched low, holding their breath. The footsteps grew louder, a voice calling out in the dark. Nikki's eyes widened, but Steve stayed focused. The sound paused near their hiding spot, the tension unbearable. Moments later, the footsteps faded. That was close, Nikki whispered, trembling. We need to be more careful, Steve replied. They waited until the silence settled, then cautiously moved on. The distant footsteps guided them deeper into the cave. Do you think they know we're following, Nikki whispered. I hope not, Steve said, determination in his eyes. Suddenly, they were ambushed. Cloth bags were thrown over their heads, and rough hands grabbed them. What the... Steve barely managed before his voice was muffled. Stay quiet, a gruff voice ordered as they were dragged away. Who are you? What are you doing here? A voice demanded as they were questioned in the darkness. Steve tried to stay calm. We're just explorers, he said. Nikki's voice trembled. We didn't mean any harm. Their captors pressed on relentlessly. Why were you following us? Steve struggled to respond, the cloth bag over his head making it hard to breathe. Despite their protests, they were led further into the cave, blindfolded. Steve and Nikki were pushed through icy tunnels. The uncertainty was chilling, each step dragging them further from safety and deeper into the unknown. They were pushed into a small, dimly lit room, finally having the blindfolds removed. Steve blinked, his eyes adjusting to the faint light. Nikki looked around, her face pale. What is this place? She muttered, the icy walls closing in on them. The captor stood at the door, blocking any escape. Weapons made of ice and metal scraps glinted ominously in the dim light. The interrogators approached, their expressions cold and calculating. Who sent you? One demanded, his spear pointed at Steve. Swallowing hard, Steve answered, We're scientists, we're exploring the cave. Nikki chimed in, We're part of a research team here to study the ice formations. The interrogators exchanged skeptical glances. Scientists, huh? One muttered. Why should we believe you? Steve offered. We can show you our equipment and data. But the tension remained heavy in the air, their captors unconvinced. Suddenly, a loud noise echoed through the room, causing everyone to freeze. What was that? Nikki gasped, panic flashing in her eyes. The lead interrogator, clearly rattled, ordered, Stay calm! The ground trembled beneath them, adding to the chaos. The captors hesitated momentarily, paralyzed by the unexpected quake. Finally, the lead interrogator commanded, Move! He gestured toward a tunnel, and everyone hurried out, the ground rumbling ominously. Meanwhile, the rest of the team continued exploring the cave, unaware of Steve and Nikki's capture. Richard and Monica marveled at the ice formations as they moved deeper. They found unsettling signs of habitation, makeshift tools and furniture scattered throughout the cave. Their unease deepened when they discovered a map etched into the ice. It looks like a layout of the cave, Richard said, tracing the lines with his finger. Monica leaned closer. 
Something's marked here, she pointed out, her breath visible in the freezing air. Before they could investigate further, a group of armed cave dwellers appeared, surrounding them. Don't move, one shouted, weapons raised. Richard and Monica froze, their hearts pounding. We don't want trouble, Richard said, raising his hands in surrender. Monica searched for a way out, but escape was impossible. They were surrounded, outnumbered, and outmatched. The team was disarmed and taken captive by the stern-faced inhabitants. Richard and Monica were pushed forward, their gear confiscated. Where are you taking us? Monica asked, her voice shaking. The leader ignored her, leading them through winding tunnels. Richard tried to stay calm, though fear gripped him. They could only hope to find Steve and Nikki somewhere along the way. The captives were reunited in a dimly lit room. Steve! Nikki! Monica exclaimed, relief breaking through her fear. Steve looked up, a mix of worry and relief on his face. You're okay, he said softly. Richard and Monica were shoved into the room and the door slammed shut. What happened? Richard asked urgently. Steve sighed. Long story, but we're in this together now. They huddled together, whispering anxiously. What do they want with us? Monica asked, her voice trembling. Nikki shook her head, wide-eyed. Steve tried to reassure them. We need to stay calm. Desperation crept in, and they pleaded with their captors. Please, we'll leave and never come back, Richard begged. Monica added, We don't want trouble. Steve raised his hands in peace. We're explorers. We didn't mean to intrude. Their words were met with silence, their captors unreadable. Hoping to defuse the tension, Steve asked questions. How long have you lived here? An older man finally replied, A long time. Curiosity mingled with fear as Nikki asked, What's it like living here? Hesitantly, the man began to explain, We came here to escape. The outside world wasn't safe anymore. Another captor added, We built a life here, away from everything. Slowly, the hostility ebbed, replaced by cautious understanding. Steve nodded. We understand. We're just here to study the ice. The captors seemed to soften, their words revealing a hidden existence. We've lived here for decades, the older man explained. Nikki asked, But why stay hidden? The world above is dangerous, one replied. Down here, we have control. The team listened, captivated by their story and the depth of their isolation. The water's electric, the older man revealed, pointing to a dark lake. It's our first line of defense, Steve's eyes widened. That's why Richard got shocked. The captors had harnessed the natural electricity of the eels to protect themselves, Monica marveled. That's incredible. The resourcefulness of the dwellers amazed them. We use everything the cave provides, one explained. The team saw evidence of this too. Tools, furniture, and maps crafted with care. Nikki whispered, it's like a hidden world. Their fear gave way to admiration for the dwellers' ingenuity and resilience. We won't tell anyone about this place, Steve vowed. Monica and Richard nodded in agreement. Your secret is safe with us. Monica said. The older man studied them for a long moment before nodding. We appreciate that. Tension faded as trust grew between the two groups. Conversations flowed more freely, the room alive with stories of survival and community. Nikki asked about their daily lives, and the captors shared glimpses of their world. Steve observed quietly. We have more in common than we thought. The older man managed a small smile. Perhaps we do, he replied. What began as fear turned into mutual respect, both sides recognizing their shared humanity.